Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from New Jersey by Nikita Ren Thigpen. How are you doing, Nikita? I am magical. How are you, John? Uh, fantastic. Um, well, I guess I'll have to be magical too. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. And, yeah. And you have broken barriers and glass ceilings nearly 10 years ago when you architected your professional skill set as a psychotherapist, trauma specialist, sexologist, relationships expert with strategically infused tenants of breakthrough success coaching to raise the bar and create ripples inside the personal development industry. Love it. Perfect. It sounds fantastic. So what we're going to talk about today is some areas around this, like the patterns that are are blinding your brilliance and, and holding you back. And, you know, how how if you if you dig a little deeper inside, you know, you can create better relationships, both professionally in sales and obviously in your personal life. So um, diving right in, um, Nikita, you, you've taken a a very different maybe approach or angle to all of this. Maybe you would like to explain to the listeners and viewers. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for a beautiful introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, this week actually is our 10 year anniversary of our business. I'm very excited for myself oh, and for my husband. Congratulations. Thank you. We feel like adults in the entrepreneurial world at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, so the one of the reasons that I decided to really dive deeper into balance, relationship, and intimacy for power couples specifically was because I noticed that as a trauma specialist, so that's my my old hat that I still you know use all those tools mm -hmm. for, but as a licensed clinical social worker and psychotherapist who was really helping people survive their trauma, get off the floor of themselves, if you will, I was seeing how those stories, those inner child um, unhealed wounds were impacting not only their adult lives, but they were driving a lot of their decisions in all of their key relationships, not just with their forever lover at home, but with their brothers and sisters in their relationship, their colleagues and their customers as well, which I'm sure you can speak to really fondly when you see that someone's personal life undealt with is showing up and reflecting in how they lead, how they show up fully and how they impact with their customer intimacy and ultimately the experience that they're giving. What I wanted to do was create a way to close that gap, that love gap that was happening for them personally, I wanted to close that up so they could not only show up fully as humans in this world, but they could create ripples that would really do more than just build legacy for their children, but it would build stronger families that would produce you know, other humans out of that yeah. that could also carry out these really good redefining moments for the world. Yeah, and it and it it is really fascinating, Keith, and it's fascinating work that you're doing because I mean I totally agree with you, in terms of we have this we have this strange situation where when we turn up for work we think we have to park everything at the door right, and there are things that we should park at the door. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, but. It's almost like, as you said, I mean, we may have all of these issues and, and, you know, very human traits and things that are coming to us through our past and our upbringing and all of that, that are in fact getting through, are in fact impacting everything, but we refuse to acknowledge it. Yeah. And that's, that's not good for anyone. Like a lot of your, depending on what kind of product or service that you're offering, mm -hmm. if you happen to be a business owner owner or even a high level VP who runs kind of a micro business within that mm -hmm. organization. The other people on the other side buying that product or service are in fact humans. They're looking for some version of connection. They don't need you to come into their bedroom unless you're me, right? <laughs> and to, to help them with any of those things necessarily. But they do want you to be empathetic, to be compassionate, to be sincere. And it's very hard for you to show up that way 
if you're not being empathetic, compassionate, and sincere to yourself and in your own life because of all the wildness that might be happening kind of, you know, behind the curtain of your life, if you will. And nowadays with everybody and their mama and their, their two-year-old having an online business right now, mm -hmm. everyone wants to be an influencer, but not everyone understands that influencing doesn't necessarily mean impacting. If you're that, that business owner, that entrepreneur that really is trying to have your sales pop, you know, pun intended here, very specifically, mm -hmm. If you're doing that, the way to stand above the noise is to be fully you. And it's very hard to do that without feeling like you're having imposter syndrome if you're not willing to look at both sides of your life, the home, the love, and the work all together. Yeah. And I'm glad you I'm glad you actually raised that issue of the imposter because it's something we talk about a lot here about the imposters syndrome and you're you're correct because if you're not addressing all of those issues and you're putting on a facade when you're in work uh let's face it eventually either people are going to see through it or or you're just not going to be able to sustain it and it's going to cause you know problems um behind the scenes so what are some of the ways that you can start to address all of these issues and understand the connection between them and maybe the success or lack thereof you're having in your work life yeah, I honestly, I teach people to be selfish. <laughs> it's the best way to kind of clear all the noise and disrupt the patterns of busyness that so many people are doing. Like they stay busy so they don't have to deal with themselves. So they don't have to be still and be quiet and hear the noise, the mind chatter that's happening. Uh, so the, the selfishness for me is a personal intimate gift for you to create your joy. That's all it is. And when you're selfish enough to take that time, whatever that looks like, you know, 10 minutes of blowing bubbles and doing cartwheels or mm -hmm. 20 minutes of wiggling your toes and doing some grounding techniques, whatever that looks like for you, having that me time and refilling yourself personally, your personal vessel will allow you to show up with a little bit more energy when you're trying to create the we time with your forever lover as what, you know, what I call your partner. And if mm -hmm. you're able to do that, you know, we can be as cheeky as you want, John. You know, I can take it all the way to the bedroom. If you're having a good <laughs> orgasm, you are going to show up fully to work the next day. Okay. You know, like we can go, you know, yeah. all the way there. Um, and even if you're not, you know, physically intimate with your lover, for whatever reason, it could be med mm. medical issues or challenges, mm. the emotional intimacy, the recreational intimacy, which is a thing that you create when you play together, when you just yeah. stop looking at the news and, and arguing over the politics and all the <laughs> things, and you just pull out a, a good old game of Jenga and turn it into a version of strip poker. Like we can really have fun <laughs> with some old school things to really just have a good time with each other and remember why you you connected with this human in the first place, even though they've gotten a little older, they swallow a little louder, they, you know, push the toothpaste <laughs> from the middle of the roll, you know, things have changed your view of them because you've been exposed to their intimate spaces. Mm -hmm. But if we can get you back into a place where you can enjoy each other more, then you can show up fully on the other side of your life, that open space where people see you at work all the time. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting, Nikita, because I think during the the pandemic and and the lockdowns and all of that, I think uh, people have gone in a number of different ways, right? There are those people who have filled the void with Netflix and politics and social media and Come everything. On. Yeah, everything to your point earlier about everything to make sure that you don't spend a second with your partner or indeed with yourself, even more, mm -hmm. as you said, even more importantly. And then there are those who've actually used the time to so for self-reflection, to rediscover and reconnect you know, with, with the other people, um, with other people in your life. And I think those are the people who are emerging from this. They're bringing a freshness and a vibrancy to their interactions with those. You know, if you're in sales and you have rediscovered and reinvigorated your life, that's going to carry through in the interactions you have with prospects and customers. Absolutely. And I've heard, you know, the noise from the street, so to speak, of like, oh, we've been stuck inside for 14 plus mm -hmm. months with each other. I'm over it. I don't want any more intimacy. But the reality <laughs> is you weren't really creating intimacy. You were just in proximity with each other. And that is very different. That's like being in proximity to a lot of 
great potential clients, but not <laughs> actually converting any. It's very different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's like standing close to somebody famous. I mean, it doesn't make you famous, right? Absolutely. Despite what people think on. I mean, uh, <laughs> and I think the other thing, and I think the other thing that you touched on there, and I think it's a really key thing. You said like, you know, people are so focused on trying to be influencers or whatever, instead of trying to be real people and bring yeah. their real experiences to bear. Because I think this is the other part, Nikki, is like, I think everybody has such a rich, uh, a, a rich collection of experiences and obstacles and things they've overcome over the years, but they never, they, they don't take notice of that. Uh, and they don't look and, and look for evidence of all the great things and what they can do and, and invigorate themselves and, and, and uh, you know, to move forward. Instead, they, they're looking for shortcuts because that's the culture we're in. Oh, yeah. Instant gratification. John, you almost made me break out my maracas, which I do with my clients when we're <laughs> celebrating something. <laughs> you are preaching. You're, you're a thousand percent right. You have to acknowledge your achievements and your accomplishments that you already have so you can enjoy them and create more without being busy trying to avoid the next potential flaw or mistake, not only of yourself, but you're more likely to start pointing fingers at other pointing fingers, excuse me, at other people like your team, like your leader, all the things that they're not doing at work for you versus, you know, yes, you have to hold people accountable with KPIs and metrics and all the things, but you want to also congratulate, what are you doing good? What are you doing well? Let's build on your strengths. And we have to do that with ourselves. Well, you know what? I might not be really good with cooking dinner for my man, but shh, listen, when the lights go out, I'm really good there. So let me double down on my strength and, you know, focus on it. I can hire a chef, right? Like <laughs> different. And we, we need to do more of that celebrating ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. And I, and I think it's, and I think it's really fascinating. I think how people infuse what people rather what people infuse their lives with right so for instance as we touched on earlier i mean if you start your day with with news and social media and all of that kind of stuff what kind of day are you probably going to have you're going to start off angry because let's face it the news isn't about information anymore exactly. it's about provoca provocation mm -hmm. um and social media is about comparison and all of that and so these these are just not good ways to set yourself up for the day yeah it actually you're allowing other people's issues other people's worlds other people's lies quite honestly to mm -hmm. drive your decisions for your day it's i don't know what who wrote the meme but there was a meme somewhere on social media that said like don't compare your your everyday filming to someone else's trailer right like you're mm -hmm. seeing the trailer of people's lives yeah. the best parts the provocative parts you're not seeing the behind the scenes and you're constantly comparing yourself to that when you do start your day with instagram reels or or tiktok and there's nothing wrong with that as a little downtime right you, you want to play mm -hmm. you want to sure. see you want to support other people many of you that are listening have businesses that are on social, social media so it is your business to be on it well, if that's the case, how about you create some transition time so you can go from beast mode to lover mode, beast mm -hmm. mode to giving yourself permission to pause and play with yourself, your children, an old friend you haven't talked to in years because your business was scaling so fast and you lost sight of them. And now you're looking at your key relationships thinking everyone around me just wants something from me. No one is there who is really for me. Part of that is your fault because right. you were so focused you know, being busy building that you neglected some of those key relationships. And now you're, you're feeling lonely, even though you're surrounded by people. Yeah. Or that, or, or that you surrounded yourself with people who were serving some kind of purpose for you, but you didn't realize what purpose they're serving. And sometimes it's not, it's not always a good one, but I think that, I think your point there is a really good one is that you have to be deliberate about the relationships around you. And I think we often go on autopilot and then wonder why we feel lonely. Absolutely. I literally have, because I know all of our schedules are productive. I try not to use the word busy unless I'm being cheeky, but mm -hmm. I literally have a weekly reminder because my schedule is really full too. It's called deliberate moments. My deliberate moments remind me, reach out to 
people in your funnel, right? And th- I'm not just talking about clients. I'm talking about sure. my prayer warrior sister that I've known since I was 13 and we're really good friends, but our lives have taken us on different paths. So we're, we don't see each other often, right? Like I want to check in, give her a WhatsApp, give her a voice note, send her a love box, you know, something in the mail, like doing those things, those small touches that don't really take much of your time, but do matter to the other person. It, it, put so much so many deposits in that bank of trust for you that when it's time for you to cash out when you're old and gray and feeble and need someone to drive you to your doctor's appointment (laughs) you got somebody (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, as i always say um you know i always ask people so who do you know that if you broke down on the freeway at 4 a.m in the morning would get out of bed to come and collect you and uh, that tends to that tends to stump a lot of people and then i go okay probably worth mm-hmm. thinking about uh, mm-hmm. the relationships around yourself. Um, so here's the other thing to keep. So how does this then, if you are taking care of all of these things, right, in, in your in your personal life and all of that, mm-hmm. when you come up against obstacles in your work life, you have such a better and more solid foundation to deal with them. Because we often, because it's not the thing we often find in, in work situations like irrational reactions that confuses or we react irrationally and that confuses everybody else but a lot of that comes from the lack of foundation absolutely you don't have enough space in your tank so to speak that energy management tank that all of us are walking around with many of us don't have much energy in it so there's a lot more room for frustration there's also a lot like that air between your actual energy fluid, if you will. And the space at the top leaves room for all kinds of nonsense to get in there. Shame, guilt, rage, anger, frustration, imposter syndrome, like all those things will get in there because it's not full with the right things already. Your energy management has to always be in check so that you can show up fully in every area of your life. And if life gives you a storm because it does bring storms mm-hmm. and hurricane hurricanes with a few intervals and then it follows up with a tornado right like all those things sure. happen to all of us across socioeconomic statuses and ethnicities and everything but if you've been filling up with the right things you have something to propel you forward through those valley times in your marriage if you you lose someone in your life, if you're grieving the loss of a child, like those really hard, no one should have to experience moments that will come to all of us. When they come, you have something to give because you have a full energy management capacity tank. But if you don't, you all you have is rage and frustration. I remember the first uh, VP that I ever ran into in my younger years, I was in my early 20s working at a crisis center. Um, and he was just a jerk. He was just such a jerk. And my first thought in my twenties was he is not having sex. I literally thought I was like, he (laughs) needs to get laid. That was my, my literal thought because there was so much rage and anger. Like you obviously are not releasing those hormones, buddy. And you need to get that together. Now, obviously there's a lot more to that, right? Like there's another side and who knows what his relationships were really like, but he owed patience because he didn't have any energy in his tank. And for us to get the energy in the tank, it does mean slowing down enough to see what our body needs. So I tell people all the time, just do a check-in, do a body scan with yourself from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. What is happening in your body? Are you stuffy? Do you have a headache? Is it allergies? Is it tension? Like don't just complain about what's happening, but really somatic sensory experience go over your body and then ask yourself from your, you're really asking your subconscious mind to tell you what is happening with me? What do you need? How can I support you? And the answers will flow to you. Yeah. And what I like about that, Nikita, is basically is focusing internally to fix it yourself or to identify and fix it yourself first, as opposed to, as you said, most people will focus externally and look for external reasons why you're feeling like you are, you know, I'm overworked, my bosses are being a jerk, you know, my partner's being a jerk, whatever mm-hmm. it is going on. Um, but if you start internally, because it's getting back to the foundation idea, if you start internally, that those are things that you have control over, that you can identify, that you can fix. And then you can go forward from a position of strength to maybe fix things that are externally hampering. Absolutely. And th- that's, you, you hit the bell on the hit. Like I'm, I'm going like this in my mind and my body. For those of you who can't see us, I'm like shaking my imaginary maracas. 
there's so much power in owning your own self, like owning the extreme ownership of who you are and what you have control over versus being overly worried and focused and inundated with all the things that are happening. We can't control a pandemic. We can't control someone getting sick. We can't control ourselves getting sick many of the times, not all the time, with the right food mm -hmm. and exercise and all that. But outside of that, there are things we just can't control. You can control slowing yourself down, taking a breath and talking intuitively to your body. How can I support you? What do you need from me? How can I show up for you? So you have a little bit more energy to swing off of chandeliers or to, you know, have your cells pop and not be afraid of it. Cause that's a whole nother thing. A mm. lot of our earlier couples were afraid of their success. They didn't yes. think their marriage could handle it. Well, it really does do as well as my business coach. I do it. I know it's going to be successful. And then I'm going to end up in divorce. They felt like they had to choose. And part of that is because they weren't choosing themselves. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea. I love that you brought that up as well. Um, the, you know, the concept of fear of success, because I think people always seem to think that it's all about fear of failure, but often it's about fear of success. As, as you said, it's about, okay, if I, if I am successful, then it's going to bring these changes and maybe I won't be able to handle it. Maybe I don't want to be out there. Maybe all of these things. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and it's funny how, I mean, we often come across people who will do this. They'll say, oh, there's a job I'm really interested in. And it sounds great. And then they'll go, but it's in Colorado or something like that, right? And then they'll come up with all the reasons why. And I, and I always say to them, well, here's the thing, right? You, you haven't been offered the job yet. <laughs> so how about you go for the job first and worry about all of those things after they're actually interested in you? Because I just think we talk ourselves out of great opportunities yes, because we, we start thinking about what the impact is going to be. Absolutely. And anxiety really is the fear of future possibilities mm -hmm. of things that haven't even occurred. Yeah. Um, yeah. And usually the, ne the negative things, right? And a lot of anxiety can be quelled by not jumping so far ahead, especially in the negative. You can have future expectations, of course, you know, paint goals and have a vision. But if you start getting into the weeds of a vision that hasn't been manifested yet, you're going to get trapped and entangled and all of the things that haven't been healed in you, that are holding you, that are literally blinding you and binding you from being your best next self because you're anchored in things that were wounded and infected and haven't been cured for lack of a better. And that's a lot of the work that we're doing with our couples that are magical, powerful, successful people, but many of their decisions are still being driven by unhealed spaces and places in their heart. Yeah, no, I think that's a beautifully said, Nikita, and, and a great place to to finish. And I think this is such important work because I do think that um, as as awful as the pandemic has been, it, it has created a space for some self reflection, some self awareness. And I think that you have to take opportunities when they're given to you, despite the you know the awful circumstances in which they may be delivered to you. But I think it really would stand to everybody because we're living in a world of such intensity when things are coming from everywhere and we're allowing it to dominate ourselves instead of doing what you're doing there and is looking at the core and the foundation of your relationships of yourself absolutely i couldn't have said it better like i really should just hire you to you know go on the road with me and present me everywhere i go <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, uh, Nikita, this has been fantastic. All of uh, Nikita's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I love standing in a space where you can create your joy to be wholly successful, not just on paper and in your portfolio, but in your bedroom as well. So if you want a little help moving from creating joy, not just on your portfolio, but from the bedroom to the boardroom, then you want to talk to myself or someone at my team. All the information is below. I am happy to help you be certified selfish as well so you can get back to owning who you are and embracing your personal freedom. Yeah, I love it. Listen, thanks very much, Nikita. It'd be fascinating insights, and I would encourage people to, to check it out, uh, to, to check out the links below and uh, learn more about what Nikita and her team does. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.